evening, friends, and welcome to tonight's edition of Insight. I am your host, Pat Gagliardo, and during the second half of the program, as always, I will be answering your calls and your letters. But first, we must conclude with the third part of our three-part series tonight on herbs and their medicinal uses. Last week, we showed you some of the herbal delights that you can eat. And a short time ago, we went to the tea room at the Sundial Herb Garden in Higginum, and we talked with Tom Garden, who Tom Goddard, who is the pastry chef, about more culinary treats. And this is what we saw and ate. The tea that's, that we're serving this afternoon is the Troika tea. And this is a tea that was originally made for the Tsars of Russia. It's a marvelous tea, and I think you'll enjoy it very much. It goes so well with all of the items that we're having here for tea today. Um, on your plate, we have um, scones. And these are freshly made um, about a half an hour or so ago, made with haze toasted hazelnuts and currants. And what goes well with them, as you see on your plate, are fresh strawberries, uh, clotted cream here, and lemon curd in the little ramekin next to it. They're all marvelous with the scones, as well as the butter, if you need some extra unsalted whipped butter. Now on the three-tiered tray here, uh, starting at the bottom, of course, some extra scones if you're still hungry after those two. But on the other side here, we have um, a lovely uh, orange brandy tea cake. Marvelous. And the next tier up, we have a little fruit tart made with fresh raspberries. And a, uh, they're sitting on a, on a um, base of uh, Grand Marnier creme patissiere. A marvelous combination. And on the very top, a little sort of a half uh, confection type. It's a little meringue with uh, uh, a mocha chocolate buttercream and a little mandarin that's been saturated, or shall I say marinated, in um, Grand Marnier. So it's a wonderful way to sort of end, uh, end your meal. But feel free to sort of go back and forth any way you like. But usually one starts at the bottom and works their way to the top. But enjoy your tea. Thank and, you. And um, we will hope to have you come back again. Thank you. Bye -bye. And now it gives me great pleasure to welcome back again to Insight my guest, Ragna Tishla Goddard and her husband, Tom. Welcome back to the program. Thank, Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. As um, you know, I was hoping to um, tell our viewers from last week that they need to make, you, you have to make an appointment basically to come out to the sundial, correct? And uh, uh, make well, like reservations? Uh, for the teas, we really have uh, offered two kinds of teas. During the months of June, July, and August, uh, we offer drop-in tea on Friday afternoon. For those teas, you do not need reservations. You simply come between the hour of 3 and 5. But on Sundays, we have what we call the full menu teas with tours of the gardens, mm -hmm. and there you do need reservations in advance. The foods that you serve uh, to myself and our staff, uh, is that something that is typical during, uh, during uh, an afternoon tea? Yes, it is. Um, well, you, you, you always have an assortment of, of, of uh, various uh, treats, and you try not to have uh, desserts that are, are, are similar. You mm -hmm. try to get different, so what you progress Kind of go along with what's in season. From, from something that's a, a, a light and not as sweet, and maybe it progress to something a little bit sweeter, but nothing cloyingly sweet, so it would interfere with the tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, it only enhanced the tea. What it has and, to be, yes, uh, my husband can tell you, my family, I don't, um, I do not like tea. Uh, normally I'm a coffee drinker and uh, that tea was absolutely delicious. Uh, for me to drink a cup of tea is really, that's phenomenal in itself and it only, it only enhanced the food was absolutely delicious. So this is what you can expect when you go out to visit with Ragna and Tom out at the uh, Sundial. And it's really something very, very fascinating to see. And tonight we're going to talk about more of the uh, herbal teas. And, of course, we know summer is upon us. So what can you tell myself and our viewers? Um, what is good in the way of, you know, for refreshment and uh, herbs and um, medicinal uses as well as teas? Well, the, the one tea I think of when I think of hot weather, I'd like to drink something cool and refreshing. And... Uh, uh, then you may want to look to a country that uh, is located in a region of the world where you primarily have a hot climate and look uh, at, uh, at the uh, tea that is most popular in that particular country. And I'm right now thinking of Egypt, and hibiscus is one of the most favorite beverages there. 
and uh, simply because hibiscus made into a tea is very thirst quenching. And uh, uh, one tea that I very often blend um, uh, for our afternoon teas or, or visitors uh, is a combination of uh, rosemary hibiscus with a touch of cardamom. And now the combination, the added ingredient of rosemary um, actually helps uh, uh, with, with headaches and a little bit of fatigue. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in combination with uh, the hibiscus, with, which is thirst quenching, and then this touch of um, cardamom, which is actually uh, committative, it's good for the stomach. I mean, that is just the only beverage you ever need to, to be energetic and, uh, and uh, uh, feel like you can handle any kind of heat waves. Well, if you remember, the first time we were there, I had purchased the, the uh, herbal tea that had the valerian root in it. Mm -hmm. And you had said to me to make this, uh, to let it sleep. And I wanted to make it by directions, but I haven't really, honestly, I haven't had this, the time to do that. But I know that by using the valerian root um, itself in the tincture form, it is extremely relaxing. Um, I take that with just some apple juice or some regular juice and within a very short period of time I could feel my body actually calming down so I can understand that. Please uh, feel free to call us here viewers to speak with my guest. Tom will be more than happy to help you when the um, pastry chef ends I'm sure and Ragnar of course will be more than happy to answer your questions on herbs and their medicinal uses as, uses, as well as with the culinary arts and the number to call here 1-800 300 TV 26. So feel free to jump in and call us at any time. Tom, I wanted to ask you all the um, the pastries and the uh, scones and the other delights that you had offered us that day. They're all made on the premises. Yes, they are, and, and they're made daily. Uh, I, I use only the purest ingredients. Um, I, I try to use fresh, uh, uh, as, as fresh as I can possibly get, and whatever fruits are in season. And uh, whenever herbs are, um, whatever herbs and spices that uh, I can incorporate into the recipes at the time, I, I try to do and that also. And some are right there on the sundial, and correct? And then we garnish, of course, with, with the edible uh, herbs, edible flowers, uh, shiny jump ups, and, mm -hmm. and whatever happens to be blooming at the time. And uh, pretty soon the lavender will be blooming, and I will be using that in uh, making a, a marvelous uh, uh, whipped cream that uh, has the lavender uh, uh, flavor yeah. in it and have a special way of doing that. It's all it's low lovely. calories too now, right? Yes, but you see afternoon tea is, uh, you, you're supposed to leave all those things behind when you come for tea. It's, it's, just it's don't supposed worry to be a pleasant them. experience. You don't do it every single day. Right. And when you come, you have no, to come and enjoy it. Uh, enjoy the tea, enjoy company, and uh, the whole uh, idea of afternoon tea is really uh, a get-together um, uh, so you can in also enjoy uh, each other's company. Uh, the, the art of conversation uh, should be uh, just as part of um, a necessary part of afternoon tea as the as what you're coming to eat. So it's really not not considered a meal. It's something in between, right. and so, so you get a little bit, little bit of this, a little bit of that. But uh, wonderful company, I might yeah. add, and with wonderful surroundings, it was so restful and so yeah. peaceful for me to be there. While we were in the gardens, uh, Ragna, you took um, us through, and you were you had taken us to one part. I don't remember the name of the garden now, where you showed uh, me a plant, and it was called the Lady's Mantle. Would you please tell my viewers the story that you shared with us that day about Lady's Mantle? You're going to enjoy this. And well, the, the Lady's Mantle um, uh, we spotted in the last of the three gardens, which is the Topiary Garden. And uh, in this particular garden, I have a number of medicinal plants, and one of them is ladies' mantle. And um, ladies' mantle is primarily used as, a, uh, as an herbal tea uh, for female uh, complaints, as a uh, kind of a female tonic. But if you had lived in the Middle Ages, uh, people uh, believed it could do more than just being a little herb tea for you. Uh, uh, it actually was thought it had magical powers as well. The botanical name Alchemilla uh, vulgaris uh, alchemist, uh, that all is tied together. And now uh, we are already in the month of June, but I do want to tell the story anyway, because you may want to take note uh, and uh, think of this plant next year during the month of uh, May, because um, the plant uh, plants leaves collect dewdrops um, in the early morning. Um, the, the leaves actually fold uh, open like an accordion, and dewdrops kind of settle down like little pearls inside the, 
cup of the leaf or raindrops. And, uh, and it is believed that if you collect those particular um, uh, raindrops or dewdrops, um, that these uh, have some magical powers. Actually, if you take these as a beverage, like, an, like a, um, a refreshing uh, kind of beverage, uh, they will uh, assure and give you eternal youth and beauty. Now, it is really not that simple. You can't just rush out into the, your garden and collect these dewdrops of the leaves. Mm -hmm. First of all... You better bottle that up and sell it. <laughs> yes, but the thing is, you, you cannot even get it, take it from someone else. You have to do this in person, and you can only do it during the months of May. In addition, it has to be during the full moon, mm -hmm. and it has to be 12 o'clock midnight, and... Uh, then you are not allowed to wear anything at all, not even shoes. <laughs> if you fulfill all those requirements, there may be a <laughs> chance that this magic potion will work for you. <laughs> so remember, it is during the month of May. There's also a chance if anybody is watching you, they're going to come after you in the white coats. <laughs> you have to watch out for next May. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, you for sharing that. Oh, that's right. <laughs> And when we come back, we're going to go straight to the lines so that you can ask questions about herbs and their medicinal purposes. Remember to call in-state and out-of-state 1-800-300-TV-26. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. And for those of you who may have just tuned in, you are watching Insight, and I'm your host, Pat Gagliardo. And now we're going to go straight to the line so we can, I can allow you to speak with my guest, Rodna, and her husband, Tom, on herbs and their medicinal uses. Go ahead, Donald from Torrington. You're on the line. Uh, good afternoon. I would like to sing the praises, you might say, of uh, chamomile. Yes. I'm, I'm a person who uh, lives a stressful life, you might say, but... Needless to say, I'd like your viewer, or viewers rather, your guests to uh, tell me a little bit about the history of the chamomile herb. I find for my own self, the hotter I drink it, literally, if I lie down on a couch to watch TV, I'm out in about five minutes. And if I use it during the day when I'm up and about working, it calms my nerves instead of putting me to sleep. So I'll hang up, and if you could tell me, uh, is it true that it's been used for centuries? as a calmer of the nerves. Yeah, well, that is uh, true uh, very much indeed. It is a, a actually a very versatile herb, and it is uh, really one of the major herbs used in Europe. And um, it is not only used as an herbal tea, but that is its main, uh, main use. It is also um, uh, used um, uh, for a steam bath, for complexion and colds, so where you simply take a spoonful of the dried uh, blossoms, uh, place them in a shallow uh, uh, bowl, add a little bit of hot water, and then you drape a, a towel over your head and inhale it. And um, it cleanses really your, your en entire uh, um, uh, your, your skin, and, uh, and if you have any uh, sinus headaches or, or um, um, any, any other, uh, let's say, a really bad cold, it is, uh, it, and it's very gentle. Uh, to the uh, to the skin and membranes, so uh, it's it really is a, a very versatile herb. And it is also known to modern scientists that it has anti-tumorous properties. So it is indeed a very important uh, herb to use. Now I grew up with chamomile tea in Germany, and uh, the way we would uh, drink it is not just chamomile by itself. We would use it in combination with fennel. And that is a particularly good combination. Sometimes uh, herbs, when they are put together in combination, they complement each other and actually uh, are more effective. So that is uh, then a very calming, soothing herb. Um, uh, uh, th that is mixture. And the uh, fennel, a combinative with the uh, chamomile, are absolutely wonderful as a uh, herbal tea. Thank you very much, Donald. Have a pleasant evening. Go ahead, Bill from Groton. You're on the line. Hi, um, we 
just planted an herb garden, and in our herb garden we have some soapwort, and we also had some basil. We had a huge basil plant that I'm sorry, oregano. My wife's helping me. <laughs> that we had to uh, split to put into the garden. We didn't want to put the whole thing in. We wanted some in the house. And now it appears that the oregano is dying and the soapboard is dying in the garden. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got, it's a raised bed and, and I've got plenty of manure underneath and mm-hmm. a nice good topsoil above it. And I'm trying to figure out what I need to do to bring these things and back to life. Well, actually, you have been treating your plants too gently. Both of these plants uh, need a poor soil. So by enhancing the, the, the soil with all, all kinds of organic uh, uh, matter, uh, th- that is too heavy and rich. Um, uh, those particular plants, if you were to see those growing in the wild, the soapwort along roadsides where they grow in, uh, the plants practically in nothing but gravel and sand, um, uh, that's the soil they need. Uh, uh, so you actually have to almost change it around, take some of the rich soil away and pack gravel and, and sand uh, around these plants and mix it with the remainder of the soil. And uh, with your oregano, that is the, the very same uh, story. The oregano, uh, if you were to see it growing wild along the med- Mediterranean, with some of your, of your other herbs, they would be growing in virtually nothing but, but gravel and sand. So you may want to change the soil. Thank you very much, Bill, and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Barry from Norwich on the line. Uh, hello. Uh, there are many people who have high blood pressure, and they are unable to tolerate the medications that are used. Uh, are there herbal remedies for high blood pressure? Actually, there are, and uh, there are two herbs in particular that actually everyone should make part of of their diet. One you probably are already uh, aware of, which is garlic. That is an herb that works for either too high or low blood uh, pressure and also helps uh, to stabilize and to bring down cholesterol levels. Um, uh, So that is uh, one particular ingredient, uh, you know, added to your recipes as often as possible. But in addition, um, I recommend cayenne, and we spoke about this particular herb in past programs in great detail, so I will only mention it very briefly. Cayenne um, uh, should be used on a daily basis with virtually all of your different dishes. It helps with either too high or low blood pressure. Uh, It helps your entire metabolism. Uh, It um, it is considered by herbalists as a catalyst because it works well with any kind of food combination. And it is even used in herbal medicine to treat bleeding stomach ulcers. I mention this because a great number of people are very concerned when they hear the word cayenne, they see fire. (laughs) And they think they cannot tolerate it. But it is gentle to the system, helps with the digestion, and helps uh, you to metabolize food better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barry. Have a nice evening. Go ahead, Linda from Stratford. You're on. Hi, I have two questions for you. One, I'd like to find out what you would recommend for weight loss. And my second question is what you would recommend for herbs for back pain. And, well, let's go to the first question first. And, um, uh, well, there are a number of herbs that I actually used uh, for weight loss. And there is actually an herbal combination available. One of the ingredients is fennel, one of the um, uh, herbs used um, uh, uh, really way back in history in combination uh, with uh, detoxifying herbs like um, burdock, uh, uh, root, and uh, um, uh, other herbs uh, that um, act like a mild laxative to detoxify your system, which is, um, uh, uh, which is uh, Cascara Sagrada. But in addition, uh, one particular herb has been really recogni- uh, recognized by many physicians as being effective, which is uh, the oil from the evening primrose. And if you add that to your diet, it comes in capsule form. You can get it in health food stores or in herb shops and add a few of those capsules to your daily diet and take it over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, your diet has to be, as a whole, modified and and worked out in such a way um, uh, that it will balance uh, your energy level. Okay. Thank you very much, Linda. Thanks. Go ahead, Cameron from Waterford. You're on. Hi, thanks. This has been a great series. I know you um, you spoke about a few weeks ago about making a tea of time for asthma. I wondered if you'd be good enough to quickly go over that again for me, perhaps in a recipe form. Also, if there's any written material you could recommend. 
And um, uh, well, um, one tea that has been used uh, in the past very successfully is simply tea made from thyme, the culinary herb that most of you uh, are familiar with. And you simply take the uh, dried leaves and make an herbal tea. And then you would add um, a few drops of um, a lobelia tincture to this. Lobelia is an antispasmatic and, uh, um, and is an herb that has to be used in a very exacting um, uh, amount. That's why you don't just simply make a tea uh, with lobelia. You use the tincture where you can count the drops. Normally, when you purchase the tincture, uh, on the bottle you will see the exact amount um, specified. And uh, when it comes to an herbal tea, one to two teaspoons per cup of water. Now, in order to make an herbal tea effective, uh, the tea has to steep for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Five minutes is not enough. In addition, uh, most people are used to using uh, infuser balls for teas. Uh, this is not suitable for, for medicinal teas. The tea leaves have to go loosely into a preheated teapot, then you pour freshly boiling water over it, and the whole pot has to steep for 10 to 15 minutes. And while it's steeping, take a small piece of paper towel, roll it into a small ball, and seal the spout and the hole on the lid so that none of the volatile oils escape because the, uh, the, uh, the volatile oils themselves contain many of the valuable medicinal properties. Thank you very much, Cameron, and good luck to you. Thank you. Go ahead, Sandy from Griswold. You're on the line. Hi. Uh, a friend of mine had told me that there is a, a clover tea that is supposed to help cancer people. Um, I don't know what type of clover or whether it's a true statement. And I also would like a little bit of information on the yucca plant and how beneficial it is to your body. And well, let's start with the clover first. Actually, the, the clover uh, uh, that you, ref, uh, you are referring to is actually blooming everywhere. It is the red clover that you see in meadows uh, uh, blooming everywhere, where I think right now actually it is in bloom and could be harvested. And what you do is you pick the actual blossoms, and you can still leave the three very small leaves attached to the blossoms that are close to the blossom. Then that is dried, and that is made into an herbal tea. You can also um, uh, get an herbal tincture of the uh, red clover uh, blossoms. That is normally referred to as red clover tops. It is a red clover is a detoxifying herb, and uh, it takes toxic matter out of your system. And that is why it is very often recommended uh, for, um, for cancer and, uh, and really serious illnesses. Uh, of course, when it comes to cancer, this will not alone do the trick, but it will help um, uh, and support your system and strengthen it. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Go ahead, Blanche from Newington. You're on the line. Yes, thank you. I would like to uh, know if the uh, regular garden variety of the crocus is safe to use uh, for the saffron because it's so expensive in the stores. And while we are talking about two totally different plants, the crocus that is blooming in your garden in the spring is one particular plant that is, cannot be used as a culinary herb. The crocus that yields uh, the, the saffron uh, is an autumn blooming crocus. And um, uh, that particular crocus is not used as a whole. It is only the stigma of the crocus that is hand-picked and you need thousands and thousands of thread-like parts to make up actually um, a, a good amount of it. And that has to be harvested by hand at only one particular time in the year. And that is why it is so expensive. On the other hand, when you use it, you use such a minute amount, very little will go a long way. And now when you purchase it, stay away from, from a powdered saffron because they can use all kinds of um, oh. uh, um, uh, fake substitutes. Make sure the actual thread-like -like part of the crocus uh, blossom, that is uh, the uh, stigma, is actually visible. And then you have the herb that you really want. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Blanche. You have a pleasant evening. Thank you.
Ragna and Tom, time with you goes by so quickly. I can't thank you enough for being my guest, for coming and thank sharing you. You your wonderful us. knowledge Sorry. with us. And remember, you must go out and visit with Ragna and Tom at the Sundial. Those of you who are waiting patiently for me on the lines, please hang in there. I'll be talking with you very shortly, right after these messages. Stay with us. And we're back, and I'm going to go straight to the lines. Go ahead, Carla from Groton. You're on. How can I help you? Yeah, I have two questions. One at a time, though, okay? All right. Uh, I'm hoping to buy a house. Do you see any problem in that? No. Uh, I believe that you will be able to. I don't think this is the first time that you're either applying or the first time you're looking. I'm not sure which. I just felt that uh, this has been a process with you. So, yes, to answer your question, um, and I feel pretty comfortable about the purchase, and I feel that you probably make the move. Um, probably everything all said and done before the real hot weather, maybe before July, August, or September. Oh, all right. Okay? Long and time overdue. Go ahead with your second question. Good. Um, I'm in the process of, I got hurt at work, and I'm in doing a settlement. Okay. Do you see how that might turn out? Um, how long has this been going on? How long have you been waiting? A um, few months. Not, not too did, long. did you get hurt in the cold? No, I got hurt at work. Yeah, I know, but I mean, was it in the cold time of the yes. year? Yes. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I'm feeling like they may want to try to settle without this going and being long drawn out. So I'm going to say you'll probably hear something about it coming to a close either just by the end of the year or maybe into the early part of the new year. But I'm feeling as though that they're, they're going to try and settle it. Uh, rather smoothly and quickly without a lot of uh, without a lot of hang-ups and all of that but you be very careful about anything you're going to sign unless you know and release unless you're very certain what you're signing okay all right, all right. okay thank you thank you very much go Bye. ahead call from Jewett City you're on hi I'm in um, I'm right now I'm looking for another job and I've applied to one particular place and I'm just wondering what you see happening with that um, have you already been asked even for an interview or to go in? Um, no, they haven't started that process yet. 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 Okay. Yes. Well, this is exactly the impression coming to me, that there would be a first interview, there'd be a space of time, and then a second interview. Uh -huh. So with the second interview, that lets me know that the job is pretty secure for you. The only concern I have is I didn't feel that anything was readily available right now. Mm -hmm. So let's see what comes up within the next few months over that. Okay, so you don't see me moving from my present job as, as a good move right now? I don't think you should make any moves until you have something else in hand that yes. you're really positive. But I know that you're going to be making a move in the job field. So yes, to answer your question. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you very much. Bye. Go ahead, Carla from Rocky Hill. You're on the line. Hi, Pat. How are you? Good evening. Fine, thank you. Um, I have two questions. One at a time, though. Okay. The first one is I'd like to know when you, if you see what, when we'll be selling our house and where, where we're going to be mm. living. Oh, boy. Ooh. Well, selling the house, is that's tough. Um, first impression said it's not moving. Um, so I can only assume it's been stagnant, uh, maybe mm -hmm. a few bites here and there, but... Y Unfortunately, I can't feel that the house is going to move right away. Um, I'm going to have to give you a time frame of within a certain time, like within a year, year and a half. Within that time frame, mm -hmm. one and a half years, within that time frame, I do feel a move, a sell to the property and a move. But it's going to get right, right to the wire, and things are tight for you already. Mm -hmm. It's just the bracket. It's just the in-betwixt, in-between, the uh, price of the home, I feel, that's really causing you the, the turmoil. But the move, are you torn between two different places, two different areas? Um, well, staying in, our um, air, staying in our area and moving a little bit where I'm working. Okay. So that's the indecisiveness. Okay. Then you have to commute a little bit then. Yes, I do. Okay. That's why I felt it. But you're not going to leave the state. I felt mm -hmm. uh, in betwixt, in between, maybe a compromise of midway or something, but you'll still commute a little bit. Maybe not as great a distance as you do now, but there will still be some uh, commuting. 
The area that comes to my mind that I see a move for you is like a fairly new uh, development. And what I mean by that is it looks like houses all look like um, being um, put together by the same builder, so to speak. They may be different style mm -hmm. of houses, but all in the same place. Mm -hmm. um, and it's right off of an access highway road. Um, you would turn off and you might go maybe within a mile, mile and a half from the main highway, from the main thoroughfare. Okay. And I get houses like, I guess the, the way I want to term it is like in a court. You know, like you'd go in and you'd see maybe a raised ranch and then maybe a tutor, maybe a ranch, maybe a colonial, but all in one area. Uh -huh. do you, you know what I'm trying to tell you? <laughs> I'm hoping I do. <laughs> okay, I'm sure that you do. And that area made me comfortable uh, okay. as far as the um, convenience. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right, the second question is my daughter is getting married pretty soon, and I want you to know how her future looked with her new husband and um, my son. <laughs> well, I'm okay about the marriage. Let me tell you that right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Nothing gave me any real, uh, you know, I didn't get a real bad undercurrent now or anything, but I did, I, did feel, I did feel okay about the marriage, but I do feel a lot more communication necessary. I feel like uh, she's a little more advanced in the mature sense than he is. Mm -hmm. So she's going to have to be patient and let that let that grow and nurture together, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Good night. Thanks. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. And now we have to take a word from our sponsors, and when we return, I will be answering your letters. Remember, when you write to me at Insight, Post Office Box 425, Jewett City, Connecticut, 06351, you must include a self-addressed stamped envelope, a photo, a single person picture if possible, and up to two questions. If you are writing to request brochures or other information from the guests that you see here on Insight, please indicate this to me on the outside of the envelope that is marked Insight. Mark the date and topic of the show. All other mail is answered right here on this program. I will respect and I will comply with any instructions that are outlined to me in your letter, such as how you would like to be identified. Now don't touch that remote. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you. And the first letter comes to me from M.W. from Norwich. Dear M.W., you told me in your short, brief note to me that you were unhappy in your second marriage, and you asked me if you would be going back to your first wife and if she would take you back. Well, dear M.W., your photo and your brief note and questions brought me much sadness for you on your behalf. My impressions relayed to me that your reasons for leaving your first wife were very muddled and very confused. I felt as though you thought you were missing out on life or something and that life was boring and that maybe you needed a little excitement or a change. You are in need, I feel, for two major decisions. One, I think you should seek the aid of a therapist, someone that you can relate to as in a sounding board, if not a counselor or, or an actual therapist and perhaps a priest, a minister or someone, um, you can understand, uh, so you can understand your own feelings, because I don't believe that you do entirely. There was much love toward you and very much admiration from your first wife, and I believe that was abused, uh, not intentionally by you, but nonetheless, um, it was, and it caused her a lot of devastation when you left. There needs to be some very deep heart-to-heart -heart conversation and communication there has to be honesty and restoration of trust uh, before a reuniting can take place with you and she, meaning your first wife. Your second marriage, I feel, will ultimately fail, for I know that you were drawn together for all the wrong reasons. Good luck and God bless you, and I hope you'll take this advice via my impressions to heart. The second letter comes to me from Sandy M. from Pomfret Center, Connecticut. You asked me about closing your business new job opportunities, and a move. In looking at the photo, my impressions tell me that you need to focus in some sort of design area, maybe interior, fashion design, or something to do in the arts. And I also kept getting something with antiques. Um, your fiance strikes me as a real uh, people person, sort of a wheeler de dealer type of individual. I did not feel... Um, that you would want to move out of this area right now at this point in time 
if in fact things will turn around for you and opportunities will change. Um, but for a lucrative business venture, um, will come about for you in the areas that I have just outlined, maybe net interior design, antiques, and the like, and your husband to do something to deal with people. Um, but eventually, I felt that you might consider a move out west. I kept going west to southwest direction, perhaps Arizona or thereabout. And again, that design and looking at the photo design, art, antiques, perhaps a twist of the southwestern excuse me, the Southwestern Arts and Antiques as well. Good luck to you. The third letter comes to me from BF from Danielson, Connecticut. You tell me that you're afraid to commit and something about your own home. Well, dear BF, in looking at your photo, I became overwhelmed with sorrow and empathy for you. Yes, you do have your limitations, but I couldn't help but feel that there is more that you can do for yourself to get out of your emotional doldrums. You first need to look into some really positive self-help aids to help um, with your own self-image, perhaps to ha help uh, better manage your weight, and also some pain therapy, perhaps even through acupuncture. The gentleman that you spoke of is a nice person as far as friendship goes, but I could not feel any real passion and romance in that relationship. As for a home of your own, well, I couldn't feel anything for you in the immediate future, unfortunately, but I did um, hope that I would hear from you again, perhaps within the next couple of years, and then maybe we could look at that situation a little further. Please take the advice of self-help. Please try to help yourself in this area. Good luck and God bless. The fourth letter comes to me from PK in Uncasville. You asked me about relationship and finances. Your photo shows me a very lovely woman and a woman of knowing her own mind, but your relationship will probably not progress to a true commitment such as marriage. And it will be okay that you are good friends as well and as share in some romance. His health is a concern to me. I felt some medical attention would be necessary sometime in the cold months. And I didn't know if I was looking at the latter part of this year or sometime into the new year. And again, change of seasons all within the next two years your finances will probably remain as is some improvement but not super great take care the fifth and final letter for tonight comes to me from gloria from bristol connecticut you tell me that you were laid off and you wanted to know about a new job and romance well dearest gloria number one where's that old confidence that you used to possess for you are a woman who is funny you are outgoing and you've lost your stuffing that's exactly what came to me all your innards everything that used to make you tick you let go of get it back yes there will be a job again for you as well cold weather i don't know if it'll be this year or sometime into the new year you will work with people indirectly maybe some sort of phone work will also be involved i also sense computers but not that you would be sitting in front of them doing like data processing but there would be an involvement with them and a lot of being on your feet as well yes there will also be a relationship also within a year maybe year and a half marriage not immediate but not uh, out of the question just not right now thank you so much for your wonderful letters and remember when you do write to me please write to me on plain parchment or regular writing tablet little cards and index cards and greeting cards are very difficult for me to read from and also to fax here to the studio now stay with us and we'll be right back in a moment so i can answer some more of your calls go ahead caller from stafford you're on the line hi pat um i have a couple questions for you one at a time though okay um i have chronic back pain i've had um three back operations in the last three years. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering on uh, my um, finances in the future. Well, first of all, uh, I wish I could feel comfortable in saying that I felt that with all your surgeries that your problems were over. Um, I think you're going to have to learn to live with a lot of, uh, well, not a lot of, but um, periodically discomfort. As far as your finances go, 
I think you already know the answer to that. You know that they're going to be very difficult, um, and they will probably continue to be difficult for a while. And then somewhere down the road, within a two-year time frame, I'm feeling some sort of windfall, some sort of relief. Exactly from what I don't know. Maybe it's insurance, maybe it's some other, other monies. But I did feel some sort of monies coming to you that will be a reprieve, but you, you'll always have to probably balance. And uh, my heart goes out to you in that, in that regard. But I do want to see you take care of your health. You really, you know, you can be a stubborn individual. Stubbornness is okay, provided it has positive results. Stubbornness is good when you can tell yourself, I'm not going to let this beat me. And you do do that sometimes, but you've got to take care of yourself overall. Okay? Now, what's your other question? Okay. Um, um, do we see any um, other location that might be in my... You mean like a move? Yes. Uh, toyed back and forth, meaning uh, I think mm -hmm. it's been discussed. Uh, back and forth, back and forth, but there, you're not, you're not uh, solid enough. You're not sound. It's not uh, something that you've. Um, I can't feel from you that your mind is made up. So I'm going to say a move will probably, a move is indicated, but I'm feeling down the road. Um, let's see what comes up for you within a two-year time frame. If you'd like to get back in touch with me at that time, please do. Okay. And good luck to you. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Go ahead, caller from Jude City. You're on. Yes, I was wondering. I have two questions. One uh, at a time, though. Go okay, ahead. Okay, yeah. I was wondering, uh, my ex-husband and I have been uh, divorced for nine months, and he's got custody of the kids. I was wondering if he's going to come back to me in the future. Well, first thing that came into my mind, I feel outside influence. So that lets me know that there's someone else. Now, now don't jump the gun with this with me. Hear me all the way through. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that there is another pending relationship that's going to lead to commitment or marriage, but there is another person. There is someone that I feel he uh, can talk to a little more freely, a little more open. Yes, there is a lot of concerns as far as the children go, uh, but you have, there's had to be a lot of healing, a lot of healing of anger and disappointments between the two of you, but I feel as though that's on the way, that that's been better. Uh, there's just a little muddy water, if I may use that term, um, I'm not going to tell you that it's not out of the question that you can get back together, but even if you were to within the next three months, th some of the same problems still exist, and that has to be worked through. Okay? Okay. I and have another question. Go ahead. I'm seeing this man. I've been seeing him for seven months. Okay. Um, I was wondering, uh, should I hang on to him or should well, I leave that's, him? That's entirely up to you, but uh, this is not a complementary or compatible or nurturing relationship. If anything, it might be a little bit of dependency at this point. I couldn't feel any rockets. I couldn't feel any real passion or romance. I just felt someone that maybe took up some of the loneliness for you. But that's really basically all I did feel. So, but the decision making is yours, Carla. Uh, Good luck. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Go ahead, Carla from Northfield. You're on the line. Two questions, one at a time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got the uh, hang of it. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about a trip uh, the end of July or the first of uh, part of August. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You and one more person, or you and two more persons? Oh, I don't know now. It, it could be me and myself, or it could be one, one and two. There's going to be another person going along with you. And I did feel that across a, a, a lot of water, or I mean a great, great bodies of water with one of these, or, or the trip that you intend to take, or in, um, when you make, excuse me, when you make this trip that you will be going another place where there's this lot of, lot of water. Mm. Um, but as I said, there is another person, I'm going to say female energy as well, because the female, female keeps coming into my mind. And this is a trip you wanted to take before and you, and you put off. You need to go. You need to go. You need to rest. You need to unwind. And most importantly, you need to have fun. So go. Okay. <laughs> What's your other question? And, well, how do you see my health? How do you feel my health? Nothing stands out to me that is life-threatening or gives me any real concerns about your health as anything fatal or um, shortening your life. I do feel you get tired, run down, um, maybe energy debilitation type of thing. Uh, and something with my head 
kept coming into mind. I don't know if it's headaches or something uh, with pressures or whatever. But again, it's nothing that I feel is life-threatening. But this could be uh, blood pressure. It could be, I'm not a doctor or diagnostician. I can only pick up in, this, in, this, in the areas and sometimes symptoms. But nothing comes to mind that g is, you know, um, very scary or frightening. But just take care of yourself nutritionally, mentally, physically, you know, mm -hmm. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Go ahead, Charlestown, Rhode Island. You're on the line. Hi, Pat. Go ahead. Hi, um, I have a question to ask. Um, I've been feeling really, like, down. and. Like Can you turn your TV down or something? Because I'm getting feedback, and it's very distracting to me. All right, wait a minute. Just pick up the other phone. That would, thank you, because that, it, it gives me a feedback, and it's Is another it vibe. Oh, much. Thank you. Okay. Now I'll ask you a question. Um, lately, I've been, like, really having, like, a lot of mood swings where, like, I just lash out at my kids for mm -hmm. no reason at all. I don't mean physical. I just mean, like... I yeah, yell temperamental, at them I hear you. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, don't know, like, if you see anything in the future for me of, like... The very first thing I'd like to suggest to you, because the very first impression that came to my mind, especially since I feel it's been building up, this isn't something that just started. It started maybe that you're more recognizing that it's more often, but uh, the mood swings I felt might be fe female uh, um, connected, maybe to do with... Um, uh, your menstrual cycle or something within the female that really needs to be addressed could be like PMS symptoms and things like that I really think you need to get in touch with your gynecologist and take that route first the second thing that came to my mind you're not happy there are too many obstacles in your life too many things that are very demanding it's I feel like your cup is being emptied but there is nothing and no one to replenish it and this can be very very draining and very demanding also making you very moody and even excitable sometimes no I didn't feel physical abuse but I certainly did feel a lot of um, mental and emotional anguish and that really needs to be addressed now how would you suggest like what course do you think do you see for me in the future of trying to help you well know? the first thing you have to do is recognize the problems and the pitfalls and take them one at a time one brick off the pile at a time not the whole pile and reassess your life Find out where the areas are that are in your control to take care of. You've got to be a little bit more kinder to yourself. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank God bless. Bye-bye. And stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. For those of you who are still waiting for me on the lines, I apologize, but try again next week. Next week will be open lines so I can devote my time to you and hopefully catch up on your mail as well. Remember when you write to me at Insight, write Post Office Box 425, Dewitt City, Connecticut, 06351. You must include a photo, a self-addressed stamp envelope, and up to two questions. I will respect and I will comply with your instructions on disclosure. Also, let me know by writing to me as to suggestions or ideas on any subject matter that you would like to see presented on Insight. Thank you so much for your compliments and your support of this program. Remember, always think positive and act positive. Good night and God bless you.